Greetings, I'm Professor K, and in this short video presentation, we're going to see how we go about setting up a new DHCP server inside of Windows Server 2016. I'm currently logged on to my domain, us.cyberoffense.com. I'm on my DC1 server machine, and we have Server Manager up and running, so we're ready to get started. To begin this process, we're going to be using Server Manager and we're going to be using the add roles and features wizard now you can access this one of two ways you can go up here to manage and use the add roles and features option and that's going to launch the add roles and features wizard for you or you can use the option right inside of server manager so let's just go ahead and launch it and begin the installation process on this first screen just go ahead and click next Make sure you have the correct server selected. If you have multiple servers added to your server manager, make sure you select the correct one. I only have one server, so I'm going to be using DC1, which is .10 in my domain. We're going to click Next. And now I'm just going to select the box here underneath Roles and add the features for DHCP server. I'll click Next. And we're going to click Next one more time. And now we're ready to install. The DHCP server role has been successfully installed. I can go ahead and click on close. And now I have a yellow triangle waiting for me. And if I click on that, it tells me that I have to complete the DHCP configurations. So let's go ahead and click on that. And this is adding the authorized users that can manage DHCP. I'm going to go ahead and just accept the defaults. Click next. And it wants to know if I want any alternate credentials. I don't. I'm going to leave this up to the administrator. And I'm going to click on Commit. And we'll then close. We're now ready to move on with configuring the default settings for our DHCP server. So let's go up to Tools. And we're going to launch the DHCP Management Console from the Tools menu. Just click that. And now my DHCP Management Console has opened. Let's go ahead and expand our left window pane, see what we're doing a little bit better. And let's go ahead and expand the link next to the name of our DHCP server. Now underneath here, we can create our first IP version 4 scope. Now you're free to go ahead and create an IP version 6 scope, but in this video, we're going to be just doing the IP version 4. Let's go ahead and expand our IP version 4 and see what we have here. And we have server options, policies, and filters. These default containers are currently empty. So what we have to do is go up to our IP version 4, right click, and from the context menu, select New Scope. That's going to launch the New Scope wizard. We're now going to use this New Scope wizard to create our first scope or our range of IP addresses that can be handed out to new machines that have not been statically configured. So we're going to go ahead and just click Next. On this first screen, you're going to give your scope a user-friendly name. You can call it anything you want. For this demonstration, I'm just going to call this Internal. On this first screen, you're going to give your scope a user-friendly name. You can call it anything you want. I'm going to call this one Internal. If you think you're going to have multiple scopes, then you can go ahead and fill in the description. If not, you can go ahead and leave it blank. You can go ahead and click Next. On this next page, we can begin configuring the IP range. And we begin by filling in the information for our starting IP. And then you type in on the next block the ending IP of your range. I'm using a Class C network, so I'm going to leave the default for the subnet mask for a Class C address. We're going to go ahead and click Next. And here we can start adding and creating the exclusions that we want to have set aside for certain devices on our network. Exclusions are all about your networking design process. We want to exclude IP addresses for static devices that we're going to have on our network, such as our firewall, switches, servers, anything such as printers that we want to have users be able to access at any time on the network and not have to worry about those devices changing their IP address because of a DHCP. I'm going to go ahead and exclude some IP addresses and then these are going to be removed from the available range of IP addresses that we currently have available on the network. So I'm going to go ahead and start with 
192.168.145.1, which would be the firewall, and then we'll do some more exclusions when we get done here. Now again, it all comes down to how you have designed the IP scheme for your network. I'm going to go ahead and now exclude another range of IP addresses for my networking devices. So I have set aside, starting with dot .2 all the way up to dot .9, for things such as switches. There may be a access point, a wireless access point, or some other devices that need to be statically configured that I would consider a networking device. I'm going to go ahead and just click on the Add button there. Now, another thing you want to consider is making sure that you allow yourself enough room for growth. Depending on how many IP addresses you can spare on your network, then you would have to consider what's going to be going on for the next three to five years on your network, and you want to make sure that you exclude enough IP addresses for that growth. So if you've got two servers, well, you may be thinking that three to five years from now, I may have five servers or six servers and more printers. So take that all into consideration when you're doing this IP design for your network and you're setting up your exclusions. So I have set aside nine IP addresses. I'm currently going to be using three of those for my servers that I currently have. And I'm expecting over the next three to five years to have some more growth. So I want to make sure that I don't have to go back in and redesign my IP scheme. That's why I'm doing it now. Later on in the course, we'll take a look at adding some more exclusions into our DHCP pool. Now remember, this is not cut in stone yet. You can always come back in and you can readjust these exclusions. You can remove them. You can reallocate them, whatever you want to do. Let's go ahead and click Next. You can go ahead and leave the default for the lease alone. You don't have to mess with that. When would you have to mess with that? Well, if you're running out of IP addresses. You may have a bring your own device policy and you didn't take into consideration that your 80 users are now bringing in their smartphones, laptops, and other devices and they're taking IP addresses out of your available pool and your other clients on the network are not able to renew their lease or get a new lease. Well then if that happens what you want to do is you just want to drop down the number of days. Now a lot of times what happens with bring your own devices people log off the network they leave the network and that lease is going to stay on their machine for eight days. If that happens you won't have access to that IP address so you can then knock down the lease the number of days to say two or three. We can go ahead and click Next. And now we have the option here to go ahead and move on with configuring additional scope options. Let's go ahead and accept that default, and we're going to configure some of those scope options now. So let's go ahead and click Next. When we talk about scope options, we're talking about IP addresses for devices that we want our DHCP users to have configured onto their devices dynamically. That includes the default gateway. That's going to be your router or the IP address for the internal interface of your firewall, which is what I'm normally used to having. So I'm going to go ahead and type in the IP address for the internal interface of my firewall. I like keeping things very basic and very standardized. And the standardization for the interface for the internal interface of your firewall is usually going to be configured with the first IP address of the network and that's going to be your default gateway. Go ahead and click add on that and now when users are given their IP information from the DHCP server it will include the IP address for the default gateway. Go ahead and click next. On this next screen we have our domain name and DNS server information. It's already filled in all the information we need here. It's got my parent domain name information. And it's also given us the IP address for our default DNS server for the domain. So there's nothing for us to do really. So let's just go ahead and click Next. 
So we don't have any wind servers at this time, so we don't have to worry about that. That's pretty old school stuff that we don't usually have on the network anymore. There may be a call for a wind server if you have some legacy software or legacy devices such as Windows 95 or 98 that are not configured to use DNS, but that's usually not the case. And we can go ahead and click Next. On this next screen, we're given the option to go ahead and activate the scope, so let's go ahead and accept that default, and we're going to click Next. And we can now close the DHCP scope wizard. We can now go back over to our left window pane, and we can expand our scope, and you'll see that we have an address pool. Let's go ahead and open that up. Here you see all the information that we configured up inside of those scope options. So we have the range of IP addresses, we have our router, we have our exclusion for certain devices, and we also have another exclusion for our servers. And if we go down to our scope options, you'll see that we have the options that we put in that we want handed out as part of the DHCP information that clients will receive when they request an IP address from this DHCP server. Now once you have clients being configured dynamically with DHCP, you'll be able to come back up here inside of the DHCP management console and underneath address leases, you'll be able to see those devices and you'll be able to identify them. Currently, we don't have any devices on our network that are receiving any dynamic information, so this is going to be blank. Also, if you want to delete this scope, that's easy to do. Just right-click in here and select Delete. Now, DHCP, like DNS, is very dynamic. You can blow out your scope. You can start all over again. You can uninstall DHCP. You can reinstall it. You can build new scope options. You can create <laughs> new exclusions. And it's pretty easy to do, and it's not too hard to get in and out of DHCP if you get in trouble. And if you have to troubleshoot DHCP, my experience has been if it's a small network, and it's only got a few, let's say, 30 or 40, 50 clients, you can go ahead and just uninstall it, put it back in, and you can be back up and running in about 5 or 10 minutes just by rebuilding everything. That's going to conclude this short video presentation on how we go about creating a DHCP server and creating the default settings for all of the DHCP options that we have available for our clients. Now, if you have any questions or concerns about anything that was covered in this short video or the lab, please don't hesitate to reach out and contact your instructor, and I'll see you in my next video.